Welcome everybody to the Everything Automotive Podcast, brought to you by Imperium Racing. Imperium. This is episode three, Crazy Cars. Super wild. Just some wild, crazy stuff. What are we Uh, starting with today, Zach? I'm actually going to start this with the POTUS limo, the President of the United States limo that he drives. Um, He drives it. Well, he probably doesn't drive, but uh, he definitely doesn't drive, actually. Um, He sits in the back, though. The Cadillac One or the Beast are its two nicknames. I like the Beast a little bit better. Um, the Beast. Yeah, it's based off a of Cadillac DTS, and it weighs seven and a half tons and gets eight miles to the gallon, and has five inch steel plate armor, which is pretty crazy. Sounds like a great commuter. So most of these statistics on it are like people guessing like educated guesses of people looking at it and like guesstimation yeah Yeah. knowing the technology um or maybe some leaked information or whatever but there's nothing confirmed because it's like a top secret thing so they don't want all the info out there about it they don't want to know what penetrates and what doesn't you know exactly exactly but the uh the five inch steel plate is supposed to be underneath it has that underneath the whole bottom of the car i guess to prevent from like driving over bombs and stuff or like someone throwing a bomber grenade underneath it. Definitely necessary. And it has bulletproof uh, like doors and windows. It's supposed to be bomb proof. Um, it's supposed to be gas attack proof. It has like a air filtration system. Nice. So that no one can like gas yep. out the car. And you know if it can't drive anywhere and it's like stuck in some gas, it would be fine. And then supposedly it has a blood supply also for the president in there. Like some extra... Wow blood of the same type in case he gets like shot and they have to throw him in there if it penetrates that that steel yeah or if he gets shot outside and then they're like they just toss him in there like a a little mini hospital apparently the fuel tank on it is similar to a race car or they took the design from race car so like if it gets impacted it can't blow up has like a cuts it off or oh it has like a layer of like some sort of foam or something um like on the outside so if it gets like a bullet penetrates it, it just ain't gonna blow up. Very interesting. Um, yeah, pretty pretty crazy. It can drive with no <coughs> tires. The driver's window is the only window that actually rolls down on that car. None of the other windows roll down because I guess there's no no fresh not, air, you know, not necessary. Well, it's got that filtration. Oh, I wonder what it smells extra. like though. It'd be bad if they forgot to change Hopefully the filters. Hopefully not black ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see, there's uh, supposed to be shotguns in the door, it's supposed to have like night vision, um, there's always two of them at any given time in case it, one breaks down, so like even if the president travels Back to up. Europe or something, yeah, they bring two, they have their own plane that they get carried on. Um, so it's just a big old rolling fortress, basically. Perks of being the president, you know? The beast. Yeah. The beast. If you're the president, you get to drive around in the beast. Um, it looks like they haven't updated it visually in a while either, so hopefully they've updated the technology in it because it's looked the same for like a long time. Interesting. But hopefully they've kept Aesthetics it updated. It's not just like rusting out on the bottom or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they got some uh, some mechanics working on that, you know? Probably. Probably. It also has gotten stuck a few times. I saw some videos. I think I saw one where it was like coming out of a dri- up a driveway and then the sidewalk went down and just like got stuck on top like a teeter-totter. Because it's super long uh, and heavy. Interesting. So it just got stuck. Is it all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive? Um, what kind of drive? That's Something. a great question. I actually didn't look that up. It's a drive. It drives. It gets you from A to B, and that's the... Uh, I would think it would be rear-wheel drive, but with all that armor plating underneath, I don't know if there'd be a place for a drive shaft to go. True. And that'd suck if the drive shaft broke and you had to work on it. You'd have to take off five inch armor plates first that probably weigh like hundreds of pounds. I'm sure they do that. I'm sure they have exceptional service. Yeah, usually limos I think are still rear wheel drive though, which is crazy. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I need to fact check that. What you POTUS limbo. What you got for your first car? So my first one I'm doing the armored Humvee. Did uh, you say limbo? You say POTUS limbo. Limbo Limbo, POTUS. But uh (laughs) Yeah, so I'm gonna do the armored Humvee for my first one because they're uh, they're around three hundred to seven hundred thousand, depending on what level of armor you want. But uh, Damn. I aspire to own one, you know, just so no one can murk me as I'm driving. Hopefully, the military gets a, a 
bulk discount on that. Yeah, yeah. So the military actually is like the main purchaser of that. So they weigh six uh, six thousand to ten thousand pounds. They're not a not a light vehicle, you know. Mm. Got to stay grounded. Um, protects you from mines just as the uh, presidential limo. They have plating underneath in case you drive over any IEDs. Mm-hmm. Um, powered by good old American V8. And uh, they were in the Gulf War in 1991 was the first real uh, application of them. Uh, Humvee actually stands for uh, High Mobility multi Multipurposed Wheeled Vehicle. Damn, I didn't know that was an acronym. It seemed like a yeah. normal word. High mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle. Hmm. <laughs> v. <laughs> yeah. Mm-v. So uh, yeah, but one thing about them, uh, if they get in a bad accident, sometimes the the doors jam shut and the soldiers are stuck inside. So they actually had to invent a device called a D ring that they put on the doors so they could just pop them off. You know. Hmm. Yeah. A D ring, huh? D ring. Got the D ring. <laughs> They still make them right for the military? Um, the Humvee? I still see them in uh, footage. Yes. I remember reading something a while ago that said they still, like, they haven't obviously produced them oh. for the public oh, yeah, in a I'm while. Sure, yeah, they still use them. But they were still making them for the military. Yeah. 30 yeah. years ago, and they haven't, doesn't look like they changed much. Not much. <coughs> Lamborghini actually tried making something similar, the uh, LM002. <coughs> so it's uh, powered by. An American V12, it's rear-wheel drive. Uh, 49 were built for the U.S., 328 in total. I guess they weren't as uh, popular as the Humvee, you know. They were well, they didn't have a cool name, yeah, so that's why they didn't. They 002, didn't them up. they should have made it at least like 007 or something, you know. Yeah, then the military would have been all over it, but yeah. LMO02. That's what it is. See, if you need any good marketing advice, come to me, you know. If they just named it the Lambo LM007, it would have taken off, I'm telling you. Yeah. It was they would have bought it. Yeah, they were produced uh, 86 to 93, and then they just kind of gave up on them. So same time frame. Yeah, around probably the same. saw the Humvee get into the military action, and they were trying to get in there too. Definitely, people were uh, afraid, afraid. Or I guess 86, they would have been designing them probably at the same earlier. time. Yeah, or yeah, or I be, guess or before. Yeah. yeah, they probably got whiff of the Humvee and, and production, and they're like, let's get in, but they didn't. Well, I'm sure the American Fail. military probably wouldn't go with a foreign. Yeah, car manufacturer true. but maybe maybe italy but italy isn't in a lot of wars yeah maybe that was their downside is they didn't they, they weren't didn't get in enough wars you know they didn't want they uh, lamborghini wasn't in a country that was like we'll buy a whole bunch of military stuff yeah they don't have a downside. disposable military income <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> billions yeah trillions we'll overspend on anything yeah but yeah we'll go into what do you have next i'm gonna add a couple wheels in this next section um i was looking into the covini cgw because it's pretty cool um italian so another european car it's not cgi it's cgw cgw and it's a two-seater two-door car um they debuted in 2005 at an international auto show and they were Produced from 04 to 2016, which I was surprised. I didn't know it was that recent that they still, like, made them. Um, but those had a 4.2-liter 8-cylinder uh, top speed of 186 miles an hour, 434 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque with a 6-speed manual, and the engine was actually made by Audi. It was only manual. It didn't come in anything else? Yeah, that's all That's Rock all on. I found was just a 6-speed manual. And I it like was uh, these two Italian guys... And what they did was they had two rear wheels. It was rear wheel drive. And then the front, they had four wheels in the front, all four of which turned, obviously. And they did it as like a performance thing and a suspension thing. I was reading it. It took them a long time to actually figure out how to do the suspension because of the four wheels up front. And they started designing it in the, uh, I think it was the 80s, but didn't come to fruition until the early 2000s interesting concept there yeah because it like technology had to like catch up and how they figured out the front suspension took a while i guess but hmm. they thought it would improve handling and and steering really capabilities well it wasn't enough for to, to catch on produced, yeah, yeah to be mass produced and no one else has done it yeah. i'm sure if it was a, a better idea like ferrari or some other car manufacturer that specifically makes like trying to make the best car would have been worth a lot of money would have done it yeah. yeah um and then 
two other honorable mentions in the six wheel department is the Mercedes G63 6x6, six oh, yeah. which is pretty crazy looking. Four wheels in the rear, only two in the front, so the opposite of the Covini. Drive it in reverse and you. Yeah. Same, same well, except diff. for it doesn't steer, though. True. View. Yeah, true. But, um, but still six wheels. And I guess uh, Mercedes made some of those and had them modified for the Australian Army, which is pretty cool. That'd be a. Six which is where the G Wagon like originated a long, long time ago. Half a million dollar. That's what I was thinking. I was like, that'd be pretty badass if you were the military driving around in one of those. Definitely. Um, and then the Hennessy Velociraptor also comes with six wheels. There's a version you can get from Hennessy. Um, looks pretty similar to the G63 and only costs three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's a deal. And and it's not the alcohol. It's the uh, manufacturer. Yeah. The. The tuner, Ford, Ford tuning. Yeah. Actually, I think they do a lot of Fords. Yeah. But yeah, they have a Velociraptor with six wheels, which is crazy. I like that. It's pretty nuts. Um, so those are all my all my six wheel Friends. crazy cars. Crazy. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go and do the uh, the next car here. So just in case you're feeling a little saucy, you're driving, want to have a nice time on the lake, you know. Uh, I'm going to go with the boat car here. You know, the, the Amfa car is what they called it back in the 60s. It's produced from 1961 to 1967. Only 4,000 were made, but uh, I feel like not a whole lot of people want to go from road to, to lake. You know, they don't have yeah. a huge use for that. So 4,000 is a respectable number. It's a two-door cabriolet. came in a four-speed manual. Um, it used actually a British engine out of a Triumph. Uh, it was a... 1,147 cc's and it made uh, 75 base horsepower. Uh, it could get 70 miles per hour on land, but only 10 in the water. It wasn't a jet boat, you know, it wasn't uh, super fast, but it could get you across the. Actually, in 1965, two people crossed the English Channel in one. Uh, really? Yeah, amidst a storm and there was uh, 20 foot waves, high winds. They made it across. Damn. Well Do they just use the tires for propulsion, or does it have something else for when it's in the water? It has little propellers that uh, kind of prop out on the sides. I, huh. saw, I saw a video long, long ago. Yeah, That's super weird. Yeah, I mean, maybe the tires contribute to it, though. I couldn't yeah. imagine creating a whole lot of Imagine force. if that was, like, a popular thing, because, like, every car starts to leak oil after, like, a handful of years, and then, like, just, just people would just be driving their, like, old... Amphibious cars into the lake and just yeah. like polluting hella bad. That would be great. I mean, I guess that drips on the ground anyways and eventually makes its way into the yeah. What about ground? But yeah. yeah, I guess boat engines are all stored in little compartments, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty the like part, pretty sealed stored, off, stored away. Um. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then also like car exhaust and stuff. I just imagine if you tried to make an amphibious car now. Like especially in California, like emissions oh, yeah. and no way and all that stuff. That's probably why it never caught on. Yeah. EPA. Yeah, EPA would our be fun. like. Yeah, you couldn't even make that nowadays. Yeah. Um. There's actually another. There's a along with your six wheel theme here. There's a six wheel amphibious vehicle used back in. Uh, I believe it was World War Two. Yeah, 1940s early. Mm -hmm. Um. It was 15,000 pounds called the Duck W D U K W and. Uh, used by american troops in france as i said only or actually twenty thousand of those were made that's pretty that's respectable number especially back then mm -hmm. uh, i guess they're just swarming all around the uh, france area going river to river um they must have a lot of water sources to drive through in france yeah i guess i don't know i don't know the geography of europe very well but yeah yeah 200 well, are still used today and uh in the states kind of just giving tours on like rivers and stuff you know Good stuff. They were pretty cool. Yeah. We should own one let's of those. Go, let's go take a tour of the Mississippi River on a Duck W. Duck W. I hope that's what they like, how they said the It's lettering. probably not at all, but it's how I say D-U-K-W. They're like, it's a Duke. But <laughs> Duke. <-wa. laughs> it's probably, hopefully it's Duck W. Duck. Because that sounds cool. But yeah, we should probably buy one of those eventually. Probably. It'd be fun to have. You know what else would be fun to have? What? What are we talking about the here? The Pope Mobile. <laughs> Pope Mobile. Pope Mobile. Oh, uh, it would like the Batmobile, just for. I think it would actually be the probably the most useless car to own for yourself, just yourself. Unless you're very 
arrogant and uh, kind of Unless you got someone to carry around. Well, maybe you could carry around important people. Yeah. You'd, you'd be like the most expensive Uber. Um, so the Pope Mobile is my last my last vehicle on here. And there's been a few different variations of it. I guess it started with a, a G Wagon in like the eighties for John Paul the uh, second, the Pope. And uh I think there was an assassination attempt on that one actually, and then they like upped the armor on it. Is it and is then it a failed attempt? Or I yeah, so, yeah, failed attempt. Good. And then um the next few popes had M class Mercedes. And I saw um in 2012, they updated M class to like a newer M class, and basically it's just a M class SUV with the whole back taken off, like past the front seats, and it's just all glass. It's a giant glass container, dome, and yeah, a dome with a throne in it, and the the little throne seat supposedly is on hydraulics, and kind of like lifts up a little bit after the Pope gets up in there. Just get a little, little loosey goosey. Yeah, let him there. let him in there, and then just. Psh- up a little bit and it's all just a a glass room of bulletproof glass so he can cruise around and wave to people and not get shot which now that i'm saying this out loud i don't really know who would want to kill the pope but yeah i guess why are you thinking that way i guess people try try to assassinate one at some point so i'd like to see that car on hydraulic suspension not on a hydraulic seat but He'd just be he just be slamming into the glass there, walls you know? yeah, on each I side. I didn't see any seat belts in that thing. You know? The Pope was just like push, push, push. What if they slam on the brakes really fast? Is he is he good? He'd just probably slam up against the front and then like everyone would be able to see his squished leave, face. Yeah, leave a smudge from his oily face on the probably the someone's job just glass. to clean that glass. They probably get paid a lot. I wouldn't be opposed to that job. Probably. Um yeah, the most recent one I saw was a 2012 ML was the most recent one. They might have a newer one since then, since that was eight years ago. Pretty yeah, quick and a little. Fun, fun fact is the Vatican City uh, is the smallest country in the world, and that's when he uses the Pope Mobiles when he needs to go out of Vatican City. Interesting. He'll cruise around in that, in that bad boy. Take that on over to uh, wherever the Pope goes outside of the Vatican City, you know? Yeah, using the fancy Mercedes. Isn't there a huge wall blocking the Vatican off from the rest of the world, or is that a, something else I'm thinking of? I don't know. I don't know either. Interesting. It might be. It's it not would that make big. sense if they're so so concerned with security. You know, I guess there's bad people in this world. We went from cars to to, to the Pope. The religion. Yeah. But anyways, the Pope mobile looks ridiculous. So Google image search that or watch this video because it's pretty watch crazy. Watch the video. Which is why it's a crazy car. Crazy cars. But uh, if we missed any crazy cars, leave it in the comments. Let, let us, us know. know. And uh, yeah, that was podcast number three, sponsored by Imperium Racing. Peace. <laughs>